Welcome to the future, you guys. We are live once again on Facebook, YouTube, and on Twitch. I'm wondering if you're getting tired of watching us. <laughs> if you are, just watch another channel. But here we go. We promised a couple things. We promised to work out our technical issues and give away some stuff. And we have this beautiful light coming in through my window. The light that breaks through yonder window. Look at that orange, beautiful, golden hour glow that we are experiencing so on the beautiful. West Coast. It's pretty nice. It's actually very romantic. That solar glare. JJ Abrams would be proud. It's very, very nice. We can even kick up the flare if we wanted to. It's all natural lighting. Thanks to Mr. Aaron Zakelli. I just want to say a quick, quick hello to the Dream Team. Hi, guys. <laughs> all right. <What's> up? <laughs> now you guys are giving me the silent treatment. Friday all is part good. Two. That's what you told us now, to do. Now, I'm in a little bit more calm state of mind. The caffeine has worn off, so I hope I'm still going to chill the f out calm the f down but we shall see we promised you guys a couple things we're gonna go into photoshop and we're gonna cut some stuff out we're gonna cut things out and molly's giving me two images to work with and what we'll do is i'll do the demo and then molly will watch and hopefully she'll learn a few tricks and then she will work on the same file and we'll compare and we'll see how we're doing all right so stick around you guys roll the titles Okay, and we're back. I want to give away those prizes. Now, Molly, what color are we going to take this time? And you got it worked out this time, right, Molly? Yeah. A little user error before. You know what? I want to go with caller number three. <laughs> Let's make it easy. Okay, caller number three. We're going to give stuff away. Okay. I'm going to remind everybody, this is only for people who are sustaining members, who are active sustaining members. Call us right now. What's the phone number? Here we go. Here we go. 424-537-3377. There's a lot of threes and sevens in this number. 424-537-3377. Third caller, you pick your prize. One of our books. We're back. So here we go. 424-537-3377 to any active sustaining member. Once somebody starts. I'm there we go. Hear. I hear the phone ringing. That's the caller number one. Sorry, you're caller number one. <laughs> okay, caller number two is coming in. Decline. Next <laughs> caller gets it. Drum roll. I don't have a drum oh roll. Oh my God, Darn is it. this going to happen again? Did Molly break it again? There it okay. is. Call number ready? three. Here we go. Molly, should we put it on speaker? Yeah, we should. Unplug it. Hold on. Hold on. Molly's going to break uh -oh. it. Uh oh. Hit speaker. Hello. Hello. Don't worry Hi. about that. Hi. You are caller number three. Okay. Decline the incoming. The just be careful you don't hang up on whoever it is. Yeah, Tell no. him what's his name and what's his number and zodiac what's sign. What's your name? What's your name? My name? Yeah. Edwin. Edwin, where are you from? I am from Fontana, California. Woo! Woo! Fontana, Native California. Native I know Californian. we can ship there. Yeah. We can totally <laughs> ship there. Molly, I hope you have a I pen want. and a piece of paper, right? Wait, wait, wait. Hold on. What's he saying? I can't hear. I can't. Molly? Okay, let me get let me get your email so I can just make sure. Just get his full name and email. Full name and email. Sorry. Give me your full name and email. Okay. Edwin Martinez. That's probably good enough. We can look him up. Okay. Molly. We right, don't want him to give us email. Wait, are you a sustaining member? Yeah, of course I am. All right. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. Good. Come, to, come to my camera, you guys. <laughs> Edwin from Fontana, California. Thanks for being such a sport. And thanks for hanging in there with us. Thank you and so much. And behind door number one. Hold on. Don't hang up on him. Uh -oh. Behind door number one, Thank Edwin, is the hand style lettering book I'm from... I watch the live stream, but you guys are off like a little bit. Okay. <laughs> yes. So you can hear Chris. He's saying... Yes. Oh, because so he's talking to us and trying to... Yeah. Just tell him, what, what one of three books does he want? The Win Without Pitching Manifesto? <laughs> and I'll give him a signed okay, copy if he yeah. wants that. No. He wants the manifesto. You know what? Done. He wants the manifesto? Hello? No, no, you're good. You're good. 
<laughs> we got it. We got it. That's yours. Okay, done. Dude, All thanks right. for playing All along. Right. Thank you for playing. We will talk to you soon. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Bye. Yay, guys. Yay! We did it. We overcome. <laughs> we overcame a technological <laughs> milestone. We know yes. how to pick up the phone and not hang it up worked. on you. That got it's crazy. Amazing. Okay. That was bananas. This. Now, okay. now, guys, everybody that try to call in afterwards once we have the phone ringing and we're talking to the winner please stop calling us because i don't know how to stop you guys from calling and we're trying to talk to somebody okay well, yeah there's a delay so that's probably why yeah there's a little delay i get it okay so before the show's over molly you remind me once again and we'll give away something again okay okay and so will you make a note that he wants to sign copy from blair sign ends copy yeah blair ends win without pitching manifesto i think i only have a few more and and then we're out of uh signed copies Okay, cool. Of course, I still have mine with a custom note in here. Now, before we do the PSD demo, I have to just do one quick little thing. Now, I talked about this before as a concept. A lot of us want great clients. So we want our clients to love us. And how do you know that they love you? How do you know that your clients love you? Well, I'm going to show you. Look at this. Look at what I got, you guys. You see this? It's a nice Tiffany colored paul smith bag and it's from one of my clients i was very excited to see this because paul smith i mean come on guys paul smith paul smith so i'm gonna open it up let's see there's a yeah there's a note inside here it is it's from one of our clients guys are you gonna read it i am gonna read it it's from our client from saleshood which we just helped them to relaunch their website we designed their logo their identity system and their website but now it's just relaunch i'm gonna open it up and he's been on our show before and I hope it's okay, Eli, if I read this out loud. Chris, you're an amazing person and a creative genius. <laughs> Go on. Oh my God. You helped me in so many ways. Thank you for helping us take saleshood to the next level. Boom. 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 When your clients that's send it? you gifts, that's a wonderful thing. No, <laughs> no, 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 Molly, Molly, Molly. I thought there was a closing There's on something in here. Okay. It's a tie. No, it's not a tie. That's a very good guess though, Aaron. Now. Suck. Eli and I have matching socks. And next time he's on the show, we're going to do a selfie and stick up our feet in the air. And we're going to have the same exact socks. I'm love super it. duper excited about this. I know I'm such a dork, but there you are. Paul Soft Smith socks, guys. I love socks. You know how it's I like those gift. colorful socks, right? Yeah. You need a pair of those. And I'm going to show you. I don't wear socks. See this right there? Oh, nice. Look at oh, those Smith. socks. Nice. These are my happy socks because I'm a happy guy. Okay, <laughs> enough banter, enough teasing around. Let's get around to it. Yeah, it's it. demo time. Do we have demo time music? No. No. But I'm going to fire the lasers for this in honor of Star Wars. Okay. Boom. Demo hey, yeah. time. There we are. Demo time. Okay, here we go. We're going to jump into Photoshop. And uh, then look at my face. No, we're not. Molly selected this image here. And the not reason why one. we're talking about this is because James Levy was on her show. Or James Levy, and he was cutting things out using the brush tool. And a lot of people are like, hey, maybe you should use this tool right here, which is called the quick selection tool. And I love this tool. It's great for quickly cutting people out. Now, if there are any questions about what I'm doing, how I'm doing it, please ask. Now, Molly's going to be somewhat paying attention because we're going to cut something else out together. Mm -hmm. So something like this, let's say I want to cut this guy out holding the boom with the Zeppelin or the blimp. Uh, basically, there's a tiny microphone inside there, but that's a, called a blimp. And we're going to cut some of this stuff out. Now, it's hard by my eye even to tell the difference between the guy in the foreground and the people in the background. Okay? So the computer is going to have a hard time figuring that out as well. So I think that's why Molly picked this, because it's kind of a little bit tricky. Yeah. So the keyboard shortcut for the quick selection tool, I think that's what it's called. Come on. It's W. So whenever you hover over something, it will show you what it's the keyboard shortcut, it's W. So if I were on a different tool like the move tool and I hit W, it'll automatically switch that tool. Okay. Now, if I hold down control option, you guys can see my beautiful hands, right? Yes. If you hold down oh. the control option key, then you'll see that you can adjust the radius of the brush itself by dragging to the right or to the left. If you drag to the right, it gets bigger. If you drag to the left, it gets smaller. Sometimes this is confusing because people drag diagonal up or down. It just gets a little confusing. Okay. So here we go. Let's go into it. So I'm going to quickly, really quickly, cut them out. So all I'm doing is I'm teaching the computer what to keep and what to get rid of. Notice it picked up this dude's head. I'm not going to worry about that just yet. Nothing too complicated here, you guys. Mm -hmm. Right? 
And if I hit the letter Q, it's going to go into quick mass mode. It's going to show me what I'm keeping and what I'm getting rid of. So that toggles back and forth in hitting the letter Q. I'm going to hopefully help you guys level up. This is just one way of cutting something out. There are many ways, including using the pen tool, the alpha channel, using just good old fashioned brush painting. Mm -hmm. Okay, let me check it again. Not bad. So we got a little bit of this dude's shoulder. We got a lot of stuff in the background we don't want. And we got a lot of confusing area here. We're still missing something. So the way I get rid of this guy, I don't want him. If I hold down the key option, I can then just quickly cut him out. What was the keyboard shortcut for the alpha, the red? So Q. Q. Q for okay. quick mass. Quick. Quick mass. And if I'm zooming in, my hand is always parked on the home base, which is the space bar, the command, and the option key. So if I want to move the page around, I hit space. My hand's always parked here. If I want to zoom in, I'm going to hit command space using the split finger technique. I'm going to zoom in by dragging to the right and zooming out. These three kind of keys are golden for pretty much every Adobe app. It's, it's consistently used across the board. And it's right here, right next to my hands here. And just before I go a little bit further, uh, I'm using a Wacom Intuos tablet. This is the Intu Intuos 5 Touch. This is the medium size one. I find that this is a good size. It's not too big, doesn't take up too much of my desktop. Gives me a good degree of pressure and Wacom makes it. And they're probably the industry standard for these tablets. There are other brands, but this is what I use. So I size my brush down a little bit. I'm gonna go in here and just quickly grab the rest of this boom pole. Now, it picked up some extra schmutz there. I'm gonna just clean that up. And we don't have to be that perfect, not yet. So we gotta grab a little bit more of the blimp I'm going through here. Go ahead, somebody wanna say something? No. I heard a that was a hiccup. Oh. <laughs> well, Actually, it was a hick burp. Hick burp? <laughs> All right, be, better be careful about that. Hick burping through the show. All right, so we got some problems up here and it's having a hard time detecting the difference between this because the value, the hue is so similar. So I have to use a smaller brush. It's a little bit more nuanced. And I know from previous experience, it's gonna get a little crunchy up here. Every time it's confused, it'll give me a crunchy edge and we can fix that. Mm -hmm. But I'm not gonna fix it just yet. There are tools to fix this stuff. So it's that looking better? Yeah. Yeah. It's not perfect. No rocket science here, you guys. And as I'm working here, I also want to say thank you for everybody who stepped up and became a sustaining member. I think there were 18 of you from the previous show. Thank you so much. I think we're still, by my <laughs> math, 32 short. Is that right, Molly? I thought we were doing 100. No, I think before the show we said 50, 50 and then you, you doubled it on me. Okay, uh, okay. I would love to get 100, but I'm going to keep it realistic. So before this stream is over, it's my wag. we need 32. <laughs> That's your stretch goal. Wrong term. Oh, oops. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Big He's hairy. trying. A for effort. Big hairy. It's okay. All right. Got him. That's a bag, by the bag. way, not a wag. Okay. What does wag mean? Wild ass guess. Thank you, Molly. Oh, you're welcome. <laughs> she gave me a confused look of horror. Help me. Help me. <laughs> yeah. Help me, Obi Wan. <laughs> Help me, Obi Wan. You're the only one. Okay, you're my only hope. I'm gonna deselect that and erode that a little bit. It's getting pretty close now, you guys. Now you see this little kind of specular what is that bokeh thing yeah. i'm not quite sure if that's the background or part of him so i'm gonna just leave that alone oh yeah i'm gonna add oh, a I shoulder see you see that, that actually looks like you think that's his finger no it's not okay it's the it other does dude's look neck like the it's the black and white mime guy's neck okay now this is really confusing here too what is that thing in there skin whose skin oh the guy's behind him's neck that guy's got a thick neck. Okay. <laughs> no, it's a it's shoulder. Nice shoulder. Well, shoulder neck. It's one of those French style mime shirts that are real, <laughs> lots of room. Aaron's yeah. going to try and alienate everybody that's in our audience right now. Go ahead, Aaron. Okay. So I got to go back in and carefully do this. And you know what? Sometimes when it's this close in hue and color, I'm going to just go in manually and do that. I was going to say something, but I'm afraid of what Aaron's going to say in response to it. Okay. okay. Aaron's distracted right now. So. Yeah, that's good. So I'm going to do like this. Again, every once in a while I hit Q just to check it. So you see how like we can't see the marching ants over here, but if you go to Q, you can see that. Mm -hmm. uh. So at this point in time, I can just hit my old brush tool, scale that down, and paint over that part, like what James was doing the other day. You know, Wait, I'll is this also the quick selection tool, or is this now the brush? This is just the brush. I'm in the mask right now, and if you paint with black or white, it controls what you keep and get rid of. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. See, I'm just working. 
and you can do it a number of different ways. Oh. So it's it's not bad here. So I'm gonna go back out. But it's better if you use the wand tool because it learns with the wand tool, and I don't think it learns when you're using the brush tool. When you say the wand tool, that's the quick selection, right? Yeah, quick okay. selection. Sorry, wand. I'm I'm yeah. a little out of the loop with the Photoshop. No, that's things, okay. I'm learning, so good, good. I'm really I'm glad. interested. You keep playing Wait, along with what me. What do you Aaron. mean it All learns right. the quick selection tool? That's a great question, Molly. Thank you very much. And just so you guys, nobody get angry here. I've instructed both Aaron, Erica, and Molly, all three of them, to to ask these kind of questions in case you're new to Photoshop. Okay, some of these things they already know. So just play along. Don't don't be like oh, they should know that by now. Get rid of that. Yeah. Okay. So what you're teaching the program is I want to keep this. I'm going to get rid of that. Mm -hmm. But only in this mode. So it's like yeah, I recognize the black. Keep that, but get rid of this dude's black. So it's learning as you paint. Okay. Okay. So as I deselect stuff, you see how it's like now it learned that it wanted to keep this mm -hmm, part. Mm -hmm. Okay. See how it's kind of sticking to it a little bit. Yeah. All right. I want to be careful here. Oh, this is a tough area here. It is a tough area. Real dicey. But a professional like myself can do it. <laughs> so now we got to get rid of this part. We got some other parts in here. I want to get rid of this. And this part's really tricky too. I might just want to do this uh, via the brush tool. So I'm going to deselect this part. See how it's, it's all kind of falling apart of me right yeah, now? Yeah, it's going to be tough with the... It is going to be tough. So I think I'll just paint that part. So I'm going to keep this. And this is what it looks like right now. Looks kind of okay. bad. Yeah, okay. that's, not that's rough. Too no hot. worries. No worries. Okay. We can fix all that. So now we got to work on the rest of this. So I'm going to toggle out of this. Go back here and add this. So we started out with a medium sized brush. And we have to get a little bit smaller brush for areas where it's hard to tell the difference between what to keep and what not to keep. See these values of blue? It's confused, but I'm going to teach it because, you know, I'm that kind of guy. <laughs> no man left behind so when you say here. teach it you kind of mean just go back and do you do you get too much and then you take it out and then you yeah it kind of shrink the brush it, it learns like oh we like this and we don't yeah, like that chris so it learns so it you learns just gotta like keep we like helvetica it. and we don't like feature condensed bold <laughs> you know it knows it just learns what you like, <laughs> yeah, don't like. Yeah. you know what i'm saying molly i nice. know exactly yeah. what i mean sometimes you do here we go i'm gonna keep this <laughs> boom all right trouble area now yeah where so we got, we got some more stuff. We got to get rid of him here. So I'm going to subtract this. The pole is going to be geometric things are the easiest things to cut out manually. So mm -hmm. I'm more worried about the organic shapes in here. There's a lot of weird stuff in here. Oh, it did a pretty good job. See, at this point, if you started here, it might be really confused. Right? But I didn't start there. I started with the body, the shirt, the head, things that it knows you want to keep. I think it's running some kind of very complicated algorithm. And prior to them creating the quick selection tool, this is a very tedious task uh, that, you know, this tool wasn't even available before. And you'd have to buy a third-party plugin to get it. So I got a little stuff in here. And for the most part, I think he's pretty good. I picked up some extra stuff I want to get rid of here. Again, it's very hard to kind of tell the difference. And he's got one very thin ear on the right-hand side mm -hmm. there. And I'm going to grab this. Okay, we're almost Someone done. Someone asked, what are the pros of using this opposed to the pen tool? You can use the pen tool. The pros is this is the demo I'm running and this is the tool I'm showing. Okay. Now, the pen tool cannot uh, do hair. And if it's a complicated shape, unlike an object, it's going to be it's gonna be very time consuming. Okay. And as much as I hate kind of like bricklaying work, there's something very meditative about just using these tools and trying to get a perfect mat. It's like a little game I play with myself. I agree. Right? Yeah. It's like, can I get this perfect? How fast can I do this? And then afterwards I do it. I'm like, you're such a genius. You're so <laughs> good at this kind of stuff. Okay, anyways. So we're, we're pretty good right now. I think that's good enough. Let me just double check by zooming out. Not bad. Not bad. Not bad. Okay. But we're not done. So <laughs> while you're doing this, there's when you have the quick selection tool, you can hit select and mass. So I'm going to click on that. Okay, so there's a couple of things you need to know real quick. First of all, there's a couple of ways to view this image. And if you go over here and view view mode, you can look at the onion skin mode. You can look at marching ants, overlay, on black, on white. And you just cycle through that until you can figure out. Sometimes this is the mode I want to work in when I'm checking to see if it's clean. Because you won't see this otherwise. See that little thread there? Mm -hmm. We need to fix that, obviously. So right now, I'm going to go with the overlay. And with the overlay, you can also control the opacity so you can see what you're keeping and losing. Because sometimes it looks real good, and then you can't see anything. And then once you turn this on, you're like, whoa, 
I lost part of his arm or his elbow. I can see in here I lost something. I might double check that. Like if I zoom in, I'm not sure if his shirt's in there or not. No, it looks we're clean. Okay, mm -hmm. so I'll leave it 100%. And the way that a lot of the Adobe apps are designed is you work top to bottom. Just work top to bottom. So you can do show edge. No, that's no good. Show original. No, well, this doesn't matter because of the mode that we're in. And we can also do, is it the inverse of that? But I wanted to show the mast area. That's all good. Now, let's work on the hair. That's the next tool. You see this brush here? And it looks like this ref, uh, fire that's on it. It's the refine edge brush tool, which is R. Okay, so I'm going to... Hit R, okay. And this is going to help me cut out the hair. Sometimes it's a disaster, and sometimes it's good. I see. Okay. Here we go. And it's usually just good for hair. So I'm going to increase the brush size a little bit. I'm going to just skim around here, and I'm just going to touch these areas. So what are you doing with the keyboard? I'm doing nothing right now. Okay. I'm just drawing on the hair parts. Since his hair is kind of tightly matted to his head, it's not like a big wispy thing. The Oops. The power of this tool is not fully demonstrated. I'm not going to worry about that, Molly. Don't worry. Okay. Okay. So it's giving me all kinds of extra stuff here. It's mm -hmm. great for things like beard, hair, that kind of stuff. So I, that's not good either. This one is not horrifically uh, situated because Molly picked this image. Because there's no fine, fine, wispy things. I tried to find one, but she's like, nah, it's too easy for you. <laughs> uh, but this is where this is the power tool for hair semi-transparent things because it can do things that are very difficult to do otherwise okay okay all right now we have to go and we have to fix a bunch of stuff unfortunately so i could say i'm done now or not but basically this is the next tool here this is the cleanup tool it's the brush tool so you hit b and this is kind of like painting uh, in the quick mask mode right so if i paint right now it will if I go over here, you can see what it's doing. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to go in and I'm going to just very carefully hit some of the hair to just take back some of that stuff. So there's some transparency up here. I'm going to leave that part alone. His hair is kind of thinning out up on the top there. Uh, I, I overdid that one, so I'm going to do. Hmm. There we go. I need to bring back this area, and you can see it. So if I go in here and do the black and white mode, you can see... Oh, what you have yeah all right see that a lot okay too. so if i hit um, option i can paint over this and get rid of that stuff there's some weird stuff in here i'm not sure i want that stuff so i'm just gonna paint some of that away doesn't need to be perfect now we have to get rid of all this junk and for this kind of work for painting kind of work i prefer the Wacom pen versus the mouse. And oops, Molly, do you need a tablet? No, it's okay. I can do the You're mouse. Okay, all right. Yeah. You can deal with it. Yeah, I can deal with it. I need the tablet. Yeah, me too. So this part we're gonna need to turn on the overlay because I don't know what I'm painting back and what I'm getting rid of. Okay. So I'm gonna do a little bit more work here. I think I'm okay with this area. So Chris, just because I can't see from the screen, are you on? What tool are you on right now? I'm on this tool right here. It's the like brush tool. Uh, it's, Can you see where I'm moving? Oh, I see. It's yeah. because on my TV, I'm looking at it. It's, it's cut off. Yeah, yeah, the big screen is cut off. Okay. Is it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. On, on okay. our okay. monitor. Yeah, yeah, I see. Yeah. I'm going to just go back in and paint in the pole. Like I said, um, for geometric objects, this is very easy to do to fix. And there's a number of ways I can fix this, okay? I'm not going to worry too much about this. Uh, I'm going to go in and paint here. Oops. Hold on, option. I'm going to overpaint this, and then I'll come back. And this is where you want to turn the transparency down, so it gives you a little bit of a guide. So typically, what I like to do is, oops, uh, overpaint what I want to keep, and then mm -hmm. I'll go back and clean it up, like overshoot a little bit. Now I think I need that cable right there. It's right along his shirt here. You guys see this thing? Yeah. Mm. So I want to keep that cable. I don't know what's going on behind it. And for the sake of doing this so that you guys aren't like watching me do something watching paint dry, yeah. I'm not going to worry too much. If that's, <laughs> we don't need all the cables. Yeah, we don't need all that. So again, I'm going to go in here, shrink my brush down, paint in some of this, overpaint a little bit. And essentially, this is what James Levy was doing before, right? Yeah. He, he just goes in and paints it by hand. And I'm just going to paint... Are there any questions so far from the internet? 
Anything I need to deal with Let or address? See. A lot of them. They know what's up. Let's see. Hold on. Hold on. I'm How ready. do you switch between the different modes? Red, black, and white, etc. I'll go over here. The view mode. View mode under, and this is the quick selection. I'm in the refine selection window. Refine edge? Yeah, refine edge. Okay. Right? So quick selection, refine edge, and then you And then I'm the in view. here. I'm mm -hmm. still in here, yeah. I'm going to clean some of this stuff up right now. Of course, I can clean this up, up at any point in time because depending on how I output this thing, I can just create a layer mask from it and then keep keep refining it. I keep forgetting which key is which. Someone said, I'm sure Chris will cover this, but in channels, it would have been completed by now. Do you know what he's talking about? Uh, that's debatable. I know channels. Okay. That's really debatable. I love channels, and it's the tool I had to use before this tool. And I'm not really showcasing the power. This is why I probably shouldn't have let anybody else pick the image <laughs> um, because people don't know what they're doing, right? Yeah. Because this is really about doing those impossible to cut out things like hair, hair and transparency. You will then come back and say, that's why he wanted to show us this thing, because that's really where the power of this tool comes in. Okay. Of oh, this tool, meaning the quick selection. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Correct. Chris, I have a question. How yeah. do you switch between the quick selection thing, where it kind of smartly picks what you want, and what you're doing now, where you're just hardcore, just brush? I'm out of the... Uh, really, if I want to go back to quick selection, is this tool here at the top, where it's learning, right? Yeah. Quick selection is W here versus just brush right now because i think the software has gone as far as it's gone this part has to be a little bit of manual labor manual labor with yeah. the brush pretty All much right. so we got some problems here right it's not looking too bad no and i'm hitting shift right i click once and i hit shift to draw a straight line and if i like here i'll show you if i click here i can't do it there i have to, oops undo. i have to do it over here if i click here and I hit shift, it will draw a straight line for me, connecting those two dots. Okay? Oh. Does that mm -hmm. make sense? Yeah. Click once, hit shift, connects them. Wow. Okay? So some of you guys that. don't know that. And that's how I can clean up the pole relatively quickly here. So and click once, then click somewhere else, shift click, and it shift draws click. a line. No, click once and then shift click where you want it to go. To, okay. Yeah. You have to do it kind of in that order, otherwise you'll be really frustrated and you won't know why it's not working. And to toggle between what I keep and what I get rid of, it's the option key. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's not bad. The blimp's not bad. We have some blue spill. I'm not gonna worry about the color correction of that. This was really about learning how to use one tool and over a course of the next few live streams, we will go through and show you a variety of cutting out techniques, including the alpha channel, which is what uh, somebody had suggested we do, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, it doesn't have to be perfect because I can use the refine tool. Now, you see his beard here? Because this uh, image also is not super high res, we're going to have problems with it. So I, as the designer or whatever, I have to make some decisions about what I want to keep, what I want to get rid of. Now, I realize that is his ear, so I do need to add that part back. Is that his ear? No. See, if you, the human being, can't tell the difference between something, imagine how hard the computer is going to try to figure this part out. It's really difficult. That looks like a piece of his ear you're missing there. Right. Yeah. Doesn't it? Yeah. But it's not. See? <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's why I'm in the driver's seat. Yeah. No. I thought the same thing too, Aaron. It did look like that and it did look legitimate. But now here we have an ear in here somewhere. I, I don't know how much of it. There it is. Uh, so I can overshoot a little bit and see where it begins and ends along with his hair. The problem is he's got hair and then this other face behind him has hair too. So we have to make a decision as to what parts of his beard do we keep versus this guy's face. And I'm gonna make an arbitrary decision because it's called artistic license. Just like poetic license, you know, you can kind of change words. Yeah. I'm gonna say that that's okay. Again, if this were a higher res image, it would work better because it needs more information. So if you were downloading some low res crappy image off the internet that's heavily artifact with JPEG, mm -hmm. this becomes a really difficult task. I think there's a little bit more of his shirt in here that I want to get just to complete that. Is that just your smooth hand doing that or are you doing some kind of tool to make it smooth, like some kind of keyboard shortcut? Erica, cut, cut to my hands. These are my 
smooth hand techniques here and very smooth <laughs> okay anyways no there's there's no other technique you just got a smooth hand uh, yeah, mm-hmm. I, yeah i have a smooth steady hand because he knows how to draw there's uh, well hand. okay i don't need to to refine that too much it looks pretty good gotta get rid of this and to be honest with you guys if you are doing the comp correctly nobody's gonna be paying attention to any of this stuff anyways but because I'm super anal retentive, I'm gonna just go in and just clean up the stuff. No, let's see. I want to see the this perfect is... crystal cut right now. Yeah, like, Christo can't cut. get any better. Christo no excuses. Got yeah, it. it's looking good. Like I like watching you shave off that fuzzy stuff, man. You do? That's good. Yeah, yeah. it's kind of see what I'm saying. Like yeah, it's when it's therapeutic, therapeutic. Yeah, it, is. Yeah, it is therapeutic. It's nice. This is why before when you're complaining about doing manual labor, I'm like, shut up. Okay, that's a totally different situation, no, it's bro. It's not, and I'll tell you why. It's just your attitude towards it. Somebody no, can, man. Somebody can look at this and say, this is monkey work. And it, in a sense, yeah. it kind of is. You know, it's kind of brainless. But there's something where your mind can travel somewhere else. And I usually jam out to my Spotify tunes. And I would turn it on except for Google flag all the content. And yeah. I don't want to do that because then a lot of people in different countries can't see the video. Okay. Not bad. I'm just quickly scanning here. It doesn't need to be perfect yet because there are some additional tools I'm going to deploy. Uh, this part is garbage. I messed up here, right? So there's a couple of things you can do here. Since this is a cable, I might just try to delete all this stuff and just paint one stroke and pretend like it's all good. You know what I'm saying, Aaron? Yeah. yeah. And so I'm going to use a bigger brush. I'm going to delete all this stuff, right? So you're going to like create your own cable. I'm going to create my own cable, essentially. Okay. Yeah. All right. Are people okay so far? Yeah. Now, I know, yeah, I know good, there are some geniuses out there. There are. Yeah, they're really coming out right now. Are they really coming out already? <laughs> I mean, they're, they're trying to say there's a, all these different ways to do this, but this is the way that we're showing. Well, right tell me now. about it. Tell me about the other ways. I'm, I'm game to learn. Molly? I know. About the color channels, right? Yeah, and I'll show saying, you that. I actually know those techniques I've seen well. Chris, you talk about the color channel. Yes, thing. and I've used them. I've used them. So we're, we're kind of making some decisions, artistic license. So we see that there's a line here somewhere and I, I need to take that sucker back. But before I do that, I want to clean up his shirt for the most part, you know? Yeah. Try to reduce as much as possible any of the weird stuff. So there's some, some wonkiness on this line here, you guys. Mm -hmm. So, okay, I'm going to make a decision here. I'm going to overshoot it just by a little bit. I'm going to overshoot this by a little bit because I don't want anything left when I do the clean stroke. So now I'm going to click here and I'm going to hold on shift right there. Hopefully I hit it right. Click here. Hold on shift. That's a wow, pretty Wow, that's line. pretty good. That's not bad, right? Yeah, you got a okay. couple of little indent hooks up there. I do. <laughs> I do, Mr. Indent Hook. Yeah. I thought you liked those hook things, Aaron. Is that sexual? Never. All right. Never. Because let's keep it clean, man. Come on. I, I, that, I'm always keeping it clean. <laughs> It's you who drags the show in the gutter and your four friends who enjoy. Yeah, <laughs> there are four friends. guys that are like, yeah, Aaron. Yeah. 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 <laughs> you are us. We are you. Hashtag I am Aaron. Okay. Like we're back in high school. All right. All right. Yeah. <laughs> Junior high. It's not even high school. I don't I'd give credit not. for that. So I, mean, I need to just clean this part up. Okay. Now I can click here and hit shift and click that. This part's jank. That is the technical term. Mm -hmm. That doesn't look right, guys. The perspective is not matching. Hold on, shift, boom. Okay. Oh, I got a little bit more I need to grab. All right, now let's paint back that line. That curve, curvy one on the Th This cable? one first. Okay. This one first is kind of really hard to see. So I'm going to increase the brush radius to try to match that, but a little bit smaller than it. And for this kind of precise work, I'm going to use the right bracket. I think that's about the size. So if I go in here and very carefully draw right. this part, it's a little bit bigger than I need. It's okay, and I want to show you how to fix that. Ah. Not bad. Not great either, but okay. Clean that part up. Okay. We can fix that later. Like later, I mean in a few seconds. This brush is too big.
I'm not saying I'm a sushi chef, but it's kind of like watching a guy do sushi, right? <laughs> yeah. You're like, uh, omakase, please. <laughs> What's that mean? Chef's choice. Oh. You love sushi, right? Yeah. Yeah, you love Japanese food. Yeah. You went crazy. I could go for day. some right now. <laughs> <laughs> we went to a Kula restaurant, you guys. Those of you guys don't know, living in SoCal. It's like one of those conveyor belt sushi places in Molinier. And we're like two kids at the Willy Wonka factory. So we barely good. sat down in five plates. <laughs> we were just consumed, inhaled. And afterwards, their belly ached. Uh, right. You know what? I was, did, that that place is it. like, it's made to just shove food into no, humans as fast and efficiently and I, as possible. Dude. The two experienced yes. Asian dudes did not do that same thing. Yeah, okay. No. I think, oh, shoot. There's a little something here. <laughs> I had a stomach ache after, but I'm down to go back. Me too. I'm down to go back. <laughs> you guys learned your lesson? Yeah. Just yeah, take yeah, it slow. slow Maybe order a beverage or something. Slow and steady. Slow and steady wins the race. Okay. I think there's some things in here, but we're not going to worry too much about that, you guys. <laughs> I think the I don't want to bore our audience here. Yeah. Or maybe I do. Excuses, man. Make that shit tight. Hey, watch your language. Sorry, dude. sorry. Kids watch a show. It's a it's a family show, man. The students watch it. I don't know too. what happened. I'm just the second live stream of the day. I'm starting to starting to lose it here, man. <laughs> it's all it takes, huh? It's Two all live it takes streams. For <laughs> That's his mental constitution is broken by just two shows. So he would not make a good secret agent when they're torturing him. It's like, I can't handle it. People mm -hmm. want to see Chris's hand. They say it's so steady. Why? Because it's so steady? Yeah. Meh. <laughs> you want to bring the ire of the internet. That's up to you. All right. <laughs> We're pretty good, guys. I'm going to crank this all the way up. I'm going to go into black that and white mode. Good. Yeah, you're good to go. I mean, that's a pretty clean silhouette, Solid. guys. Yeah. So we got some hair stuff in here, right? Yeah. I can clean up some of this, which I will. I'm going to break the brush a little bit bigger and clean up a little bit of that. Okay. Now I'm going to use some of the tools built into this program and clean up this mask. Okay. So anyways, edge detection. I'm going to play around with the radius. So you do work from top to bottom is how I know how to do this. And of course, if I don't get this right, it's Molly's fault. No, I'm just kidding. You guys let me know and I'll fix it. <laughs> so change the radius. So if I adjust the radius, you guys will see that it'll start working on this. So if you adjust it higher, it starts to get a little chunkier. It's trying to get more detail, I think. And if I reduce it, you can see how it's a little sloppier. Mm -hmm. So somewhere in here is always a magic number and it kind of depends on the masking technique that you use, right? Because I adjusted it higher, you notice here it's starting to get a little crunchier. You guys see that? Yeah. If I put it back to zero, you'll see. That's a different kind oh, of crunch, yeah. you know? Mm -hmm. It's a tough so decision two pixels. Here. It is a tough decision. You're right, Aaron. And this is kind of like, uh, it's kind of like in the keeping of the metaphor with uh, sushi. Like some people want a little more wasabi and some people want a little less. And it's kind of your choice. Luckily, I can go back in here. I can fix some things as soon as I adjust those parameters. So what'd you choose? One? Two. Oh, I thought I had it at two. What happened? Oh, as soon as I paint it, it kicks it, it kicks me out of that mode. I didn't realize. Yeah. That. Okay. It basically says, yo, dude, you're done painting. Stop painting because we're going to do calculations after you stop. So I will stop like right now-ish. Okay. <clears throat> okay, two pixels. And, and then you can do the smart radius if you want. Sometimes that helps. Did it do anything? I didn't see anything. I didn't see any difference either. Let's try and crank up the value a little bit and turn on the smart radius and toggle back and forth to check. Is it better or is it worse? Let's go back to two. I can't tell the difference. Okay, since I can't tell the difference, I'll just leave it like that. Global refinements. You can actually smooth this thing out and you, you'll notice it mostly in the hair here. If I smooth it out, watch. If I smooth it out, it, it'll start to blur everything. You see that? Say yes. 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 Look at the hair. So if I go back to zero, you see how I have the detail in the yeah, hair? Yeah, yeah. So some things you want to smooth out. I definitely don't want a feather. I'll show you what the feather looks like. It just blurs the mask. I don't want that. And sometimes adjusting the contrast helps. So I can adjust the contrast. What is... So that just... It makes the mask crunchier, right? So crunchier means like a harder edge? Yeah. Look, you see this values up here in the yeah. hair? If I turn it up, you see how it makes it oh, crunchier? Oh, yeah, I yeah, see. Yeah. yeah. So you can turn the contrast up a little bit if you want. So how is it better? This way, more crunchy or less crunchy? It depends on the image. And if you have like lots of fine wispy things, you may want to 
make it less crunchy. And let's look down here. There's something called shift edge, which mm -hmm. will choke the mat. Basically, if I drag it to the left, the mat's going to shrink. Watch. I you see. see him shrink? Yeah. I'll adjust it more. See, it's shrinking into him. It's eroding out the mass. And if you go the other way, the mass expands. Mm -hmm. So it's grabbing more. Okay. So typically, I leave this at zero, and then I do like like minus three or something. So it just chokes the mat a little bit in case uh, I, I got too much. Now, all these other kinds of things, detaminate co colors, I fully don't understand all that kind of stuff. It, it does some color correction image. Okay. Now, when I hit OK, no, I'm going to output it to a layer mask. That's important there. Okay. Or you can do selection, but I'm going to output it to layer mask and hit OK. So what happens right now is when I go into my layers, you'll see it looks like this. There's the original file. There's the layer mask. Nothing has been damaged in this file because I do need to go and clean it up. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to go and check it. And this is a good trick. It's the same thing that James Levy was talking about. Pick a super bright, annoying color, like a really bright green. And then hit option delete to fill it. And now I can check to see if my hair is okay. Hair is looking good. Looks pretty good. There's a little spillage here. Mm. So if I go into this mask, now I can use some other tools inside of Photoshop. I can adjust the contrast by using the dodge burn tool. It's right here. Uh, I think this is the burn tool. And it's O. Okay. So I'm going to drag this down to be a little bit smaller. I'm going to change the exposure to 50%. And I'm going to adjust the midtone. So uh, actually I want to dodge this. What does this dodge burn tool do? Yeah. You remember dodge and burn from photo, the uh, photo emulsion and all that kind of stuff? No, I have no idea what you're saying. It's a selective area to increase or decrease levels of contrast. So if I drag it over here, it'll make that part. You see how it adjusted that? Oh yeah. And I, see I can it. adjust the midtones, the shadows or the highlights. So if I want to adjust one area or the other, watch if I adjust the highlights, it would just attack that hair. Oh, okay. Ah. So I'm just going to go in there a little bit, a couple of tricks here and there, clean this up. Right. Okay. Because that looks unnatural to me. See this area here? I want to burn that part. Can you guys see that? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'll zoom in. I want to like burn gray, that. Kind of. Right? Yeah. I think if I can toggle through this, I think it's shift O. Let me try. Yeah. yeah. It's shift O. So if the tool has only one keyboard shortcut, like all O's, you just hit shift and it'll cycle through them all. Cool. So if let me keep it up. See? Sponge, dodge, burn. I want to burn the midtones here. Burn them a little bit. Fix that edge. So to get rid of the white, you do burn, and to add it in... To darken the image, you would burn. To make it lighter, you would dodge. Okay. Dodge and burn. So I got some issues in here, too. So this one I want to, what, Aaron? You want to burn. Dodge. Good choice. <laughs> so I want to dodge the highlights in here. See that? Oh, okay. So I'm going to get rid of that junk. So his beard is okay there. You know, go through his neck a little bit, clean that up. There's some issues here and there. So I can be a little bit sloppier because it's not going to attack my shadows because I've changed it right here to highlights. So highlights meaning white? White to about the midpoint of gray. And then somewhere in there, it becomes midtones. So highlights, midtones, and shadows. I see. So it's not looking at the original image and the brown of his hair and the blue of his shirt. It's just looking at this black and white. Well, right now I'm only working in the layer mask. So I only have black and white to work with. Right. There's another tool that you can use that is kind of like this, which is use a brush tool and change it to overlay painting mode. Oh, that's confusing me. Maybe we should stick Too with many what you're tools. Doing. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I'm going to hit brush B. And this part I need to fix. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to switch my color by hitting X. And I'm going to click here. Oops. Undo. And then hit shift and try to attack that there. Clean that line up. I Very see. clean. Stop talking about my hygiene. <laughs> Okay. So right now I'm just painting with white, right? See that right there? Yep. If I change this to overlay, I can't paint over there. It only attacks this area. Oh, I didn't even know wow. I could do that. Yeah. So you can be a lot sloppier. Uh, that's We'll call this the Aaron approach. Okay. Just be real sloppy. Overlay. It's not that critical, right? Molly, you should take notes on this and teach me later. Cause this is no, stuff. Molly's going to be doing this in about a second. Yeah, I am. Because we're almost done with this demo. Well, you got a you got a pad and everything. No, oh, you I'm mean? I'm gonna just use my mouse. Okay. Yeah. I she's can gonna, use it. She's gonna work on something. Yeah. Okay, so I think you guys get the concept, right? Yeah. Okay. And I'm gonna switch this back to normal now instead of overlay, and that way I can paint in here. I find that depending on which artist is working on what, they all we all have different techniques. I'm not calling myself an artist, but. 
people have different techniques. Like Jonah's going to have his own technique on how he achieves a certain result. And that's why it's always fascinating to see what other people do and how they're able to do it. What happens if you change the mode to multiply? Multiply? Like in paint right now. Yeah. Well, you know what multiply does? Darkens it? Yeah. It, it does what oh. it's supposed to do. So it will darken. It the... will darken the image. Okay. But I'll show you a trick in a second. The overlay one is the one that's important. You don't want to do multiply. Okay, I'll show you what happens. So I'm on brush mode. I'm going to change it back to overlay. And I'm using white, right? So if I paint right over here, it'll adjust the contrast there. Okay. However, if you use black, watch what happens. It darkens that. It does the opposite. So that's why you want to do overlay. Okay. Overlay is the way to go. You just clean up these edges, okay? So you're using overlay and what was the other mode? Blend mode thing you're using? Oh, are you talking about the dodge burn? Or, or multiply? No, I never use multiply. Molly's just confused everybody with that. Sorry, I was... It's okay. You're just using overlay and what other one? I'm just using overlay or normal. Okay. Or normal, okay. Yeah. So I, I depending on how what kind of mood I'm in, if the keynote's due in two minutes, then I will probably stop right around here. Okay. Okay. There's some weird things in here. I see. You right? can like go yeah, all the you way can go, with this uh, thing. Yeah, you can. Yeah. And you can actually make it worse by doing this because the tools have been designed to do certain things. So now I'm going to oh, go back to normal. It's pretty messy in there. A little bit. I mean, when you composite this, you'll never see that. Oops. What the heck did I just do? Got out of that mode. That's weird. Yeah, I accidentally hit too many keyboard shortcuts. Okay, so I'm going to go and paint in here with white. This line got really chunky all of a sudden. I don't know why. Okay. You remember how James was painting with things and, and things were really just gnarly? But because he's painting, he knew that the eye wasn't going to go there. And right now we're just staring at something without context. Mm -hmm. Yeah, how do you know if right? this is... Like it looks good black and white here, that hard white edge, but... You go back out and you can see it. I see. You can oh, see man, it right That here. is looking pretty good. No, it's looking really chunky here. So I can go and I can fix this right now. Right. So again, just to be clear, you're on the uh, overlay mode right now. No, normal. I'm normal. I'm painting in the layer mask. Okay. And it's showing me the result. Okay. So I, I'm on the layer mask as I clicked on it. If my friend Kara Green is watching, who she's like, I don't really know. Yeah, I don't know Photoshop. So <laughs> that's why I'm doing this for Carrie and all y'all out there trying to work with Photoshop. I feel like I've been paying super good attention, but I could not do this again. Aaron, That's maybe you, you should do it, it. <laughs> with me. Do this with we me. We should do this because there's a lot of switching back and forth between mm -hmm. tools and stuff, there and is. it really works well. Yep. But yeah, you see, like all that work that I did with this um, wand, this um, oh. cable. Yeah, it got, it got, it got all jacked up. up. It got jacked up when you were doing the shift edge thing. Is that what happened? No. Okay. The shift edge just chokes the mat. I think it's all in those radius tools and. All that kind of junk. That's where it got effed up. Sorry, pardon my French. So you're just brushing in stuff right yeah, now? Yeah, I'm just manually painting it. It's fine. It's easy to do. And this is what James would be doing, you know? So to each his own. I think when he was doing it, a lot of people were saying, oh, you just use that tool, you know? So okay. like right here looks like it'd be useful to paint with a green brush over that bumpy cable. No, no, no. you don't paint with a green brush because there's no green. I'm just turning on the green so you can see the effects of it. Right, right. but like... You know, the equivalent of conceptually, you know. It's right. pretty clean, right? I mean, yeah. we, we'll work on it more, okay? Those are the basic concepts. And I'm going to show you one with hair in a little bit. But before we do that, we're going to work on something else. Okay. So I'm going to save this guy. I haven't saved anything yet. Oh, well, before I do it, let, let me let me crop him. I don't want the rest of this junk. So I'm going to hit C for crop and then bring this in. Bring this in a little bit. And I'll show those other guys. I actually do know the channel trick and that produces results too. Sometimes it's better. And I'll show you probably five or six different ways to cut something out using the pen tool, using the channel. We've already covered a couple different things here and using layer mask or the quick selection tool. Now I'm going to save this file and it's like cut out demo guy, cut out. So this and naming convention, hold on. Give me one second, Aaron. Naming convention would be to say cut dash out 
Let me try and do that right. Dash demo. And I'm going to put it here in my cutout. And I'm going to show you guys my massive, my massive texture library. Can we right share here. this? <laughs> uh, no, we cannot. Is It's not a asset that I can share. It's like from a stock photography place. I uh, got it. Got you know it. what I'm saying? Yeah. I can share it with you, but not with the public. Is that, is that what you're asking? No. I was oh, asking with the Most public. definitely I can share with you. Okay. Not that. Here we go. Oh. Oh, this is the image I was supposed to cut out, Molly. I know, but... Holy cow. <laughs> it's fine. You're right. I'm wrong. This is the image we're going to cut out now. This is, yeah, this okay. is what so I We have that recorded. To... He admitted yes, that we we you did, were we right did. and he was okay. wrong. Okay, so oh. Molly. Molly, Miss Golly. Yes. You're going to cut this out? I'm going to cut this out. Oh, okay. Molly said she had a hard time cutting this thing out. Okay? So you use that tool, and I might do it with channels this time while you're doing that. Come Molly, okay. do you want a wake-up board? I got you. I'll get you one. I mean... Yeah, I'll get you one. All you right. want one? Okay, so those those guys that wanted me to use the channels, hey guys, guys, okay, those guys that wanted me use the channels to cut something out. I feel like I want to learn this. Yeah. <laughs> well, why don't you learn one thing first? Okay. <laughs> uh, they wanted me to go into channels, and you look for the channel that's got the best contrast between the background and the foreground. Okay. And it's kind of mixed. It's mixed right between the red channel and the blue channel, and mm -hmm. I can see that there's good definition here on the blue channel on my face. And there's some good definition here too, but there's no single channel that's like, yeah, it pops. Okay. All right. This being an internet image, being that you guys pull this from the live stream, it's low res. I can see a lot of artifacts, so this is going to be problematic. But Molly, when you're ready to go, we're going to go. Oh, I'm ready. Ready? Yeah. Hands on your mouse? Yes, hands on my mouse. But actually, Iron's coming in here. So you're not ready. <laughs> when you say you're ready, you're really not ready. Is my lighting okay? The sun the sun has gone down now? Yeah, or you're you're a bit dark. dark. Right? Check yeah. cut to me or check me or whatever. I got it. I'm very warm oh. and dark. Yeah. Okay, cut the away from earth me. Has turned. Cut away from me and then when Aaron comes back, let's let's cut my screen, yeah. When you're ready, Molly, let's go. Let's get comfortable. Um, I did ask Molly 15 times if she needed a Wacom tablet, and no, she said no, no, sorry. no. I'm not going to do it. It's not working. It's not working. It's not calibrated, so I don't want to do it. It's, fine. it's not calibrated? She needs to get the driver and the whole bit, dude. That's why we do show prep. Don't worry about it. Don't I'm worry about it. Though. She didn't I'm want it, Aaron, so let her do what she wants to do. Give me your wake up, man. I want to try it. Okay. I have one in here, by the way. Okay. We're you good. We're the back. The one that works. Now. Okay. Molly, you ready? Yes, I'm ready. Okay, cut to Molly's. Ready, Molly? Hands up in the air. Call, uh, uh, Molly's Aaron. connection is cut. It's not working. Oh, wait. What? And Aaron, Yeah. you need to adjust my light when you okay. have a chance. Hold on. What, why it got the, unplugged? And then it's don't, don't worry about it. Just cut to your shot, you guys. Cut just to your shot. my shot. Hands up in the air. That's not Molly's <laughs> shot. It's just a black screen. Okay, Molly, three, two, two one. one. Let's go. Okay. Aaron, are you going to adjust my light? Yeah. Thank you. What's up? Don't worry about doing the demo, Aaron. I don't know why, then, but yeah. Molly says she's pretty good at cutting things out now, so. We're gonna make sure if she's doing it, as long as she's mastered it, we're good. And whose screen are we looking at? Mine or, or hers? Uh, yes. Hers is black. It's not, like I said, the connection. Okay, we'll working. deal with that in a little bit. Aaron will help. There we go. I'm almost done. This one's pretty easy to do. I don't know why Molly said this one was so difficult. Ooh. I just had a hard time with your shirt in the background. Were you using the same technique? Um, it's a yes or no kind of question. Yes, I was using this tool. You sure? Yeah. Your long pause makes me suspicious. It's because I didn't give it that much time. I was just like, eh, I'm going to Well, <laughs> that's like many things in life. Yeah. Oh, I wanted to show some uh, the guys uh, some uh, spot healing brush too, and we'll talk about that. There's some blemishes on my face when I'm zoomed in this close, a zit or blackhead or two that I want to get rid of, and I'll show them how to do that. So I'm gonna just grab that. Uh oh. Yeah. Told you you might glitch. Uh oh. Okay. Okay. Molly, you feeling pretty good? Yeah. Feeling good. Feeling great. Yeah. Feeling good, feeling great. What song is that, Aaron? I never heard that 
uh, it's like a rap song. I'm feeling good. I'm feeling great. I don't know where the end of my glasses uh, end, so I'm just going to make some an educated guess. I fixed Molly's. This is Molly's computer now. Great. You shouldn't be able to tell the difference. We're basically doing the exact same thing. I'm just mm -hmm. having... This is not a competition. What it is is I wanted to see where Molly gets stuck so I can help her and you guys. And I could give you this image, except for I, don't, I feel a little protective of giving you my face. But I suppose you could just screen capture it. Checking. Quick mask, right? We're pretty good. Look at that. I don't know why Molly was... Why was it difficult, Molly? What's this area that's giving me trouble? So I'm going to do brush. Normal. Okay. Oops. Which Nightmare. technique are you using? All of them? The one I just showed her. You're yeah. limited to that technique, Molly. I know. That's oh. what I'm using. Yeah. There should be no question about that at all. The whole point was to learn something and then apply it and ask questions if you get stuck. There's my ears. You know what it was, Chris? <laughs> no. I think let me tell you. <laughs> I wasn't zooming in that much and I Oh, you just, just handicapped yourself artificially? Yeah, so I just realized that like zooming in as soon as you zoom in a lot <laughs> No, like really closely, then it's so much easier for it to the tool to recognize like what you're trying to do. Okay. That's just what I what I noticed right now. So you're saying if you try, it'll work. Yeah. Basically what it is. Yeah. Yeah. And then it's a little fuzzy in here. And just fix that. People want to know where I get this type hat from. And I say, wouldn't you like to know? Someone said that it has bad kerning. <laughs> I don't think so. You know who it's from? Type Directors Club. Yeah. From the from the creative director at the Type Directors Club. So if you have issues with it, you email him. You let him know. I have no note. Suggest that the kerning is off. And I'm not saying use my voice. Use your voice because I'm not saying it's off. Okay. Let's see. Okay. So I think I'm almost done. Molly, you almost done? Almost. Do you have any issues? Um, no, just need to clean up some edges right now. It's not that clear. Okay. I think because I had used the detail thing incorrectly, that's why my edges got all chunky. That's probably the setting that messed it up. So this time I'm not going to do that same mistake. I can learn from my mistakes. We hear Tears for Fears in the background. Yep, it's break time. Oops. Tears, what's the name of the song? Everyone's to Rule the World. By Tears for Fears. Love that band. Me too. Uh, were you live during that era? No, nah, before my time, but yeah. I like that kind of music. Yeah. The 80s? Yeah. Yeah, 80s, 70s, 60s. It's 80s. Even I from was. From the 40s to 70s, I'm into it. I was alive in the 80s. How old were you? The which <laughs> year? <laughs> the year the song came out. When was the year that the song came out? Probably late 80s when I was in high school. Uh, I was born okay. in 1986. I think so. I'm ready to go. Okay. I'm ready to go. So quick mass out of his. So uh, hit the Q tool, no, the W tool, and then hit select and mask. It's pretty good where it began. I'm almost there. Mm hmm. So I'm going to go and show the overlay and make some adjustments here, you guys. It's a little rough there. So again, edge detection, turn up the radius a little bit. It cleaned up some parts. I might have to smooth it a little bit. There, that seems pretty good. I have no hair, hair or wispy bits to deal with. So it's not that difficult to deal with. And so I'm kind of done, Molly. Okay. To this thing that you said was really difficult to do. Hey, hey, reason. you're putting words in my mouth. No, you did say that. I didn't say like, really, me... really difficult. Yes, you did. This is the one you're like, this is the challenge you're going. This one will kill you. All right. <laughs> That's pretty much it, you guys. I mean, I can fix a few bits here and there. See. It's a low res image, so it's going to have some problems. 
you know, some things to clean up there, but for the most part, it's okay. Now, while you're doing that, Molly, yeah, and the rest of the world's like, why is this one difficult? I don't know. <laughs> Are you done yet? I'm almost done. Any issues at all? Um, no. So I got a little extra cheek here. I'm gonna get rid of that. So I'm gonna hit brush, reduce the brush size a little bit, and I'm gonna paint in here. Get rid of that. We we probably could take back some of that. That's okay. This part probably could be a little bit smoother. And it's fairly easy to do. Let's do a progress check. Molly, show Molly's screen. How's okay. she doing? That looks pretty good, Molly. Yeah. Baby work, I told you. I know. You told Is me. that work. just quick selection tool so far? Uh, yeah. And yeah. I'm okay. Some paint I'm going to show you the guys the spot healing brush because some people were saying like, why didn't James use it? And I'm going to show you what it does. Okay. Spot healing brush is right here. I think it's J. I think you go to the letter J. Screen. Okay, you guys. Mm -hmm. Right. So here it is. Boom. Okay. So I'm just going to put a dab there and erase some of these blemishes. Easy stuff. That's how you get rid of stuff. So like, you know, I don't want that. Get rid of that. Whatever. If I want to get rid of this line under my eye, that's a little bit more work. I got a weird hair there. A little blemish there. Some stupid stray hair on my neck. That's all you do. Just hit it with that tool and you can clean your face up. Oh, that, that messed it up. I just draw like one dot. Be a little bit more precise with it. Okay. See that? Spot healing brush. Okay. That's cutting out. I think we should talk to the people. Okay. Not difficult. <laughs> None of this was difficult. I'm going to go and look for a, a shot with hair or something. Actually, the shot that Molly originally picked uh, that I messed up on. So why don't we talk to the people? I look really okay. red right now, but that's okay. Oh, yeah, you do. I, <laughs> I look super red, guys. Are you angry? Like I'm always angry, but no. <laughs> Not specifically, no. Okay. All right. I'm going to save this file. Chris cut out, PSD, desktop, sure, save. What are some questions, Molly? Let me see. Oh, I need to get That's out. how you cut something out. I'm going to show them another trick, but maybe another we trick. don't have enough time. Uh-oh. Okay. okay. This is the next project I'm going to work on. I'm going to cut her it? out. Okay? She has hair. There's some funny parts here. This part's going to be a little difficult to do. And then there's a table. Okay? I might do those separately, but I'm going to begin. Here we go. Molly, yeah. anytime you have a question, you can hit me. I can talk and walk and chew gum at the same time. Oh, you can? I didn't know that. I can. Learn something new. All right. Let me see. Mm -hmm. Mm. Will there be any compositing demos in the future besides this one? Yeah, we're not compositing yet, right? We're just cutting out. So we're going to learn each skill. This is like Mr. Each Miyagi. Step? Mm -hmm. Mr. Miyagi, right? We're going to learn one skill at a time, and this is a cutout skill. And believe it or not, if you're pretty good at cutting out, you can get a job as a roto artist. Is this going to be a course or? I wasn't planning on it, guys. Oh, that's, a, you know, that's a really good question because I wanted to remind everybody that we're going to be picking up the logo design course back up. We took a little bit of break. I was really busy. Mm -hmm. And so the next i believe tuesday you guys want to tune in for that because we're going to do word mark and molly's going to, not molly emily's going to join us and she's pretty good at doing logo design so she'll be part of the team for that broadcast and Ooh. we'll design a live logo together word mark okay so that's pretty much this girl she's pretty good um do i want to need to fix this part maybe do i care probably not uh, i'll fix that part later that's probably just best using the lasso tool. Okay, so we've got some transparency things here. Things where we're not quite sure where it begins because it's kind of blurry and hard to find the edge. I'm going to grab a little bit more of her hair. Going to overshoot the hair. Not that far. Okay. There's no questions? No comments, Molly? I'm, just, I'm reading. It says, Chris, how do you go to black and white mode of the mask? Okay, we're going to go select a mask right now. If you go to the top of the selection... I assume they're talking about the black and white mode, which is K. But how do you go to that and then do the overlay thing? You switch V. No, no. I mean, paint with the overlay. You can't. Not in this mode. Okay. So how do you get to that mode? We have to be done with this mode and I'll show you again. Okay. Okay. All right. 
That's what they're asking, right? Yeah. Okay, so we're pretty good right now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this tool. Again, I'm going to do the hair. And I'm going to just brush over here. This is going to get a little tricky, you guys. What time on Tuesday will the stream be? That's a good question. What time will it be on? 11. It's always at 11-ish. 11-ish. Sometimes 4. Ooh, this is terrible. Yeah. Look at this. Oh, what? Oh, what's going on? Yeah, here? it's picking up too much junk. So some parts it does a wonderful job and some parts it's horrible. So, so I'm going to try and teach it to get rid of this part. Is it this tool? No, it's this one. So we can delete some things. See how it's kind of learning? Yeah. It's kind of thinking about it. I think this is like processing, running some complicated stuff in the background. Mm -hmm. It's getting better. I'm going to delete this. Because I'm not sure I gave it enough data points to figure this thing out before I did this part. So now I'm going to keep this. It's getting better. It is getting better. A little bit. A little bit. Okay. We still have some problems here because there's a lot of wispy bits. I should be able to pick this part up. I'm not quite sure. Maybe my thing was too, my brush size was too big. I'm going to try to do her shirt and see if it can figure it out. So you, oh, okay. No, I didn't do any. Yeah, I did do a little bit. What's your question, Molly? Finish this. Oh, I was thinking, are you using the that hair tool on that too? Well, see, see this here. That's how you know I'm using the hair tool. I guess you can't see it. I can't. So yeah. yeah, I'm using the hair tool for the transitions between the background and the foreground. Okay. Okay, and it's kind of really garbagey. So there's some problems here. I'm not gonna spend all this time fixing this, but okay. you can go in here and fix it. Okay. Okay. All right. Uh, any any other questions, Molly? Like I haven't heard a single question yet. No, I mean there's they're all not, good. Yeah. So I, like we showed you questions. how to cut something out. Yeah. Okay. I guess I can do a different demo right now. You can. This Should I? The next one. Huh? The next on your list, right? You you gave a list of five things. Yeah, I can show them how to use the pen tool, but this is. Uh, I guess I can show them pen tool. I mean, we've been painting with a brush. So, oh yeah, that's what we need to do. Okay, we'll do that. Because they have asked about the overlay and I forgot about it already. Okay, I'm gonna go back to this red thing. I need to work on this a little bit more and then we can move on. They're asking like technical questions. Like is a Wacom tablet an essential tool? 100%. And it's essential tool for the health of your hands, in my opinion. I was getting carpal tunnel syndrome because I was using um, an ergonomic mice. And it was really bugging me. Mm -hmm. And my hand started to ache. And I was thinking this is the beginning and the end of my career. So when I picked up the Wacom, and I pretty much go almost exclusively Wacom for everything, including working in Illustrator, with the rare exception of I'm drawing super precise stuff, mm -hmm. uh, I will go back to the mouse. But the mouse, you hold in your hand a little bit differently than the Wacom. Yeah. And it, it starts to hurt you. So this is a kind of really close to the way you write. And... It's a natural, like your resting hand position is like this, right? Versus like this. Yeah. So when you twist it like that, you're causing um, different kind of muscles to shoot up your arm and that kind of stuff and, and your shoulder blade and your trapezius and all that kind of stuff. All right. Someone's saying, I feel like this channel has been doing way more beginner stuff than high level design thinking and strategy. Yeah. We do both. We do both. Got to mix it up. Shoot. You mean so James Levy and Jonah were like really beginners? Is that what you're saying? <laughs> Maybe. I think they're referring to this. Well, it, what was the demo? What was the title of the show called? Photoshop. How to cut stuff out. Was it, it wasn't called how to strategically execute yeah. the conceptual uh, frameworks. Mm hmm. Actually, it was called Photoshop Demo. Was it? I gave you the title, right? Oh, did you yeah. fix that? Yeah, I gave you the full title. Oh. You, you didn't see it, huh? Nope. Nobody reads my emails, even though there are only eight words in it. Um, George says, ask Chris to tell more about the burn tool thing on the different light levels. I don't get it. Okay. So here we go. We have layers. We need to add a layer mask, right? Mm hmm So we're going to add a layer mask right okay. there. Okay. And when I click onto this by holding the option, I'm in this mode right now. Okay. I'm going to show you if I hit the B for brush tool, this is my brush, right? You guys see my brush? You see this little area right here? Now I can just paint like normally, 
oops, not that way. I can just paint like this, and that'll take care of the problem. But in these areas here, where there's some kind of gray areas, and I want to, uh, if I paint, let me just paint right now. It's it's that kind of brush. Wait, Chris, when I double click on the mask layer, I didn't tell you to double click. Oh. I, hit, I hit said hit option click. Option click, got it. Good. Okay, so you see I have these wispy parts here. This actually looks pretty good, and there's some other part here. But there's some weird stuff. If I zoom in right here, you guys can see this area. Mm -hmm. um, you probably can't see on the, on the stream. <laughs> Excuse me. But there's some crunchy bits in here. So if I were to paint in here with the black, it would be okay. I could fix it. But once I paint with black and I get into this area, I can actually erode the white area. So if I go into, go into overlay right here, okay? okay. And I paint with this, it's just going to darken the midtones and the shadows. But it's not going to f up my my edge. See, it just darkens all the midtones. You see the difference there? Yeah. That's what that does, and that's what Aaron was asking about. Right? Yeah. Okay. So I resolved that. Is that right? Yeah, you did. Do you know that? Do you understand it now? Now, when you go and hit overlay and you paint in the darks, it darkens the dark mode. That's what I understand. Darkens. As long as you understand it, girl. Yeah. <laughs> do you understand it? No, I do. I'm using it right now. Yes, you do, right? Yes. Okay. So the dodge and the burn tool work in a very similar way. Okay. So dodge, this is dodge. Dodge will make the midtones and highlights brighter. That's all it's doing. See that? Can you see the difference? Yeah. Okay. So right now it's set to highlights. The exposure is 50%. If you do 100%, it, it would make a more dramatic thing. Mm -hmm. So as I brush over it, look what it's doing. Just increasing the brightness of the highlights. Okay. The brightness of the highlights. I'm dodging. Conversely, if I hit Shift O and burn, I'm going to burn the midtones or the shadows. It'll just make it crunchier and darker in the midtones only. I can't burn white. There's nothing here to burn. Okay. I don't hear a resounding okay. So, so the burn I'm, is no, I'm black, watching. and then the what's the other one? Look, you guys. Back in the old photo shot, uh, photo days Start when you had. A piece of negative that was being processed on a piece of uh, photo paper you would use your hands believe it or not to expose more of the image in certain areas that's why it looks like a hand going like this right where's where's my camera like this camera here my hands uh -oh. camera has hand any day camera. my hand camera so this is basically would allow the, the negative to shoot through your hand and expose an area for longer bits of time okay. so you're burning more of the image into the photo paper that's mm -hmm. where the dodge and burn thing goes. I see. Conversely, I don't have anything that's circular, but <laughs> in my wallet's here. And it was actually like a paddle with a stick on it. And you, if you knew that the exposure was different and you wanted to play around with the exposure, you could dodge the background to make it lighter by l allowing less of it through. So if this were my image area here mm -hmm. and the background was up here and I wanted that part to be lighter, I would just use the dodge tool to move around here to block out some of the exposure. And I would just move around the hand. I so it was kind of not that precise because you can't see much of what you're doing uh-huh does that make sense that makes sense that's how the dodge and burn tool works. okay cool. okay thanks for the explanation yeah yeah so i'm in the layer mask right now i'm not in this thing mm -hmm. so right now i'm gonna right click on this i'm gonna say um disable the layer mask we're back to the original okay now it is intended to be used with images and i will show you how it works okay let's say i don't know i want to lighten this part over here of her shoulder I'm on the dodge tool and I'll brush it over here and you will see under the highlights, it got brighter. Mm -hmm. Can you see the difference? Yeah. I'm toggling can. there. Yeah. Okay. So if I wanted to darken her face, I would use the burn tool and make it a little bit bigger and I could darken it right here. See what it's doing? Yeah, I do. It's darkening. And I'm just going to keep doing this until it gets really super annoying. Wow. Okay. It's pretty dark. Right. Yeah. So look at that. Looks like she's getting burned. She's wow. getting burned. Cool. But when you burn something, you're also increasing the saturation, so you have to be careful. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of things that you can do there. Okay? So I'm going to just really quickly go over other tools that you can use to mask, right? Okay. So you guys know the brush tool. We've been talking about the brush tool. I'm going to mm -hmm. change it back to normal. That's one tool you can use. Get into here, right? We can... Mm, we can go in here and just paint in here, whatever. That's one way. The other way is to use a lasso tool because I have a table here. 
I'm gonna go back out here. And I forgot how to change my layer mask options. It's right there. So I'm gonna dim it down to like 20%. Did it do it? Why didn't it show me it? Huh. Okay. I need to bring back, say, the books. I'm gonna delete part of the books right now. Okay. okay. So I'm gonna just delete that part. I'm gonna fill it with black. Okay. If I wanna get something that's real sharp in there, I'm gonna disable my layer mask for a second. I need to draw a line there, so I'm gonna use my lasso tool. Now, most of the times I like this freehand lasso tool. Some of you guys use this other lasso tool. Where is it? Yeah, that's what I use, tools. but you told me never Magnetic. use it. Never use the poly polygonal lasso tool. Yeah. Magnetic lasso tools sometimes work, but I'm just on the normal lasso tool, and I'll tell you why, tell right? Me. So I'm drawing organically, and if I wanna draw a straight line, all I have to do is hold on option, and I get the other tool. Oh, nice. So I get both tools, and as soon as I let go, it's gonna join that open point to the close point, and that's it, it's gonna draw a straight line. So it's kind of nice because I can use a combination of both. Yes. Boom. Right. And I'm going to click on this and I'm going to hit, uh, what is it? Option delete. And that's how I get a nice sharp line there. That's what I want. Cool. Okay. Okay. Now when you use the other lasso tool, shift L, this one, you actually have to close the path manually. And let's see if it, the opposite works. I guess you can, uh, you can alternate between the two. But I just like to let go and it closes it automatically for me. Mm -hmm. That's all. So they're the same tool, essentially, if you just hold on the option tool. Okay. Uh, I'm going to show you guys how to do a drop shadow, a curved drop shadow for a photograph. And yes. uh, some really basic color correction techniques because I promised many years ago, many eons ago, that I would show people how to do a drop shadow effect based on the Oli's website case study. Okay. So I have a photo here ready to go. I'm sorry. Are there any other questions, guys? Um, let me look. People are really liking this. Yeah, are they? yeah. Someone said yeah, thanks really for good. explaining the burn and dodge. Burn and dodge tool. Yeah, it's, they said that they always wondered what the hand was. <laughs> That's what it is. That's where the history comes from. So if you guys have some connection with photography, you'll know exactly what that is. Okay, I'm gonna put my hat because I'm looking a little shiny right now. You're looking very blue. Oh, it's because the blue is on your screen. Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> How, am I looking green now? Now you're looking mm -hmm. green. I should just turn on white. Okay. All right. I'm going to show you guys a photograph. This is an old photograph. This is my mom and dad back in the day. Aww. I think Aww. we're probably already moved out of Vietnam mm -hmm. right now. We're in the United States somewhere. And there's all kinds of vintage little bits and pieces to this. And what I want to do is I want to make this look like an, like a really old vintage photo and it's sitting on top of the background and I'm gonna show you guys how to do that really quick. So the first thing I wanna do is I'm gonna go into my layers palette and make sure that this is uh, not the background. Okay. I'm gonna hit command option C to bring up my canvas and I like to look at things in pixels and I'm gonna make it a little bit bigger on both sides, like uh, a lot bigger, like 4,000 pixels by mm, 2,500 pixels or something like that. And I'm gonna do it in the center, right? So. That's what it'll look like right there. Okay. I actually want my canvas to be bigger. So let me do eight by six. Okay. And I'm going to fill this canvas with a white background. No, you know what? I need a different color. Let me do like a gray color. Be a little easier to see what I'm doing. Okay. There's a couple things you need to know. First, a lot of photographs like this have a white frame. So we probably just want to add a white frame to this all, right? So there's a number of ways that we can do that. We can load the selection and then we can fill a stroke or something, adding another layer. There's a bunch of things we can do. So okay. I can go to edit. I think it's edit or is it stroke right there? And let's say I want a, I don't know how big this is going to be. I want it to be on the outside of that. So I'm going to do something like that. So that's the stroke. Cool. That's one way to do it. Um, is there another way to expand the, the selection? Yes, there is. So you can go to select and you can go to modify, border, smooth, expand, all that kind of stuff. So we can add a border to it and we can do a 50 pixel thing. Let's see what that looks like. That's what it looks oh, like. Cool. That's another way. Mm, select, modify, grow, expand. I can expand it to another 50 and see what that looks like so there's a lot of different ways to do this so there we go now i have a white 
order for it. And that's what I needed. Okay. Okay. So far, so good. Yeah. I have the image. I've got a thing. This has rounded corners to it. And if you don't like that, it's easy for me to clean up. I can just draw a mask and just do it. Do you want me to keep the rounded corners? Or you want you make know, it I like the corners. Like okay. And there's a couple other tricks we can do. We can give the edge of the photo a highlight and a shadow and all that kind of stuff to give it a little bit more dimensionality. And in order for do that, to us for to do that, I can't make this pure white. And right now it's pure white. So what I'm going to do is go into levels, which is command L and bring the white point down a little bit. So you see it changing colors there, you guys? Yeah, I do. Okay. I want to just bring it down a little bit and knock it down so it's not pure white. Something like that. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to load the selection. Okay. Okay. And I'm going to hit M for marquee. I'm going to shift it up 10 pixels and to the right 10, 10 pixels. Can you see it's been offset? How are you doing the 10 pixels? Shift up. Oh, Key, okay. shift right key. Shifting it 10 pixels to the north, shifting uh, to the right 10 pixels. Okay. Now, I'm going to command shift I, which is the invert to selection. Okay? Okay. I'm going to hide the selection right now. And I'm going to adjust the levels again. So I'm going to hit command L. Presuming that the light is coming from the upper right down, I'm going to just adjust this part. And you'll see. I'm sorry. Uh, it's here. I didn't adjust the white down. You see it's going to add a darkness to it. Can you see it's happening on the edge? Yes, I did. Okay, so that's one way to do it. I'm going to cancel because I noticed it's a really hard edge. So I'm going to bring, I'm going to unhide it. There's com some complex things here. I'm going to select and I'm going to, you know, I'll do it like this. That's what it looks like right now. You see it's only keeping those white areas right there. Uh -huh. I can, I'm going to go and blur this. So I'm going to go filter, blur, Gaussian blur. And I'm going to just Whoa, blur it just like lot. two pixels. Okay. Just want to soften the edge a little bit. Hit OK. Is two two pixels too little? Let me do uh, let me do three or let me do a little bit more. Blur, Gaussian blur. Let me try five pixels. Is that too much? Let's say it's five pixels. I don't know how that's going to work out. Anyway, so I'm just going to darken that area on the outside. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of ways we can darken it. We can fill it with color. I can even paint with a, a brush. So I, I can do that. I'll show you what that looks like. So if it G for gradient, mm -hmm. and I'm going to use the circular gradient tool, and I'm going to fill it with black. Okay. Okay. I'm going to lock my layer right there. I'm lock it so it's preserving the alpha. And if I, I'm going to change, I'm going to drag over here, and you'll see it's going to add a darkness to it. You see it's adding a darkness to it? Oh, yeah. Why Why did you do circular? The circular well, gradient. Well, you can use this tool if you want. Use whatever tool you want. Okay. That's just the tool I prefer. Okay? I just give it a little bit of an edge. Now, I realize 10 pixels is too much. This is garbage. I don't like this. So that's how you would able to go in and paint a really quick shadow edge. So there's some dimensionality. But in all honesty, the paper is not really that thick. Oops deselect it's only a few pixels thick so mm -hmm. i'm going to do this simpler i'm just going to hit it with my keyboard now but it's important that we are on the marquee tool so up maybe two pixels to the right two pixels maybe that's even too much like one pixel command shift i hide command l and make it darker that's probably a little bit better can you see it's darker there it's going black right now molly can you see that okay it's like it's so subtle you guys and that's okay all right, that's good enough for me right now. All right, there's the photo. We've added just a tiny little bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a drop shadow to this, okay? Okay. And the, the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to select this. I'm going to hit Command J, which would duplicate that layer. Uh, there's a keyboard shortcut to bring that layer down. I forget what is what is it, Option? And, nope. Control. Ooh, before I break the whole computer. Somebody on the internet tell me what it is, and we'll figure it out. Anyways, okay. I'm going to lock her that. I'm going to lock that thing down. I'm going to hide all this stuff so you guys can see this layer. Okay. I'm going to fill it with black by hitting option delete. Okay? Yeah. All right. Now I'm going to unlock this and I'm going to warp this sucker because I want a curved shadow. Anytime you put a dark shadow like this, uh, I'll do it right now and it's not locked. I'll go blur. So the last filter that you use, if you hit command option F, it'll allow you to do that same filter again, but it'll give you, I'm sorry, it's not command option F. It's command control F. Why is that not doing it? Command option shift F. Command. I thought it was that. No, it's not working. I don't know what's, what I'm doing here. Okay. Anyways, I'm going to go and blur. So I'm going to go blur. Gaussian blur. Something is up with my keyboard shortcuts. Anyways, I'm going to blur it a lot. 
Okay. The problem with this kind of blur is what, Molly? Um, I don't know. Okay. The <laughs> sharper the blur, the closer the object is to the surface, right? It casts a harder shadow. So if you do a nice soft blur, it's going to make it feel like it's maybe a quarter of an inch off the page versus just one millimeter off the page. Okay. But it still makes it look really flat. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to undo all that. Okay. okay. So I'm going to look at this. So what I want to do is I want to warp this thing. So how do I warp it? Why isn't it giving me the tool? Hmm. Transform. Warp. Okay. So what I want to do is just take this point and warp it a little bit so it has a curved shadow. Let's see. That's all I'm doing. Okay. okay. Hmm. And you can offset a little bit so it's not perfect because maybe... The picture is not perfect. Yeah, maybe the picture is not totally perfect either. And I may be overdoing this a little bit too much, but let's just do that. Okay. Why is there another thing below it? Feels like there's two light, two black. Doesn't right? it? Yeah. Why did that happen? I don't know. I'm going to delete this and do this again. Hit this, Command J. Lower this, All right? Turn this on. Lock it. Option delete. Unlock it. Transform. Warp. And now it looks better. Down. Okay. Put more and then bring this point out a little bit. Let's just say that's what it is. Yeah. Okay. okay. So that's what it looks like right now. So you can see like even in its hard edge version, mm -hmm. it, it kind of looks like Warp. there's some curvature and there's some space and photos are a little warped, right? Mm -hmm. So th that's a good start. Now I can go in and blur this like I was doing this before. Go to blur. I'm not sure why this is, I swear it's command option F. Why isn't it working? What's command option F? Like what are you trying to do? This is command. What oh. is this little carrot thing? Is that control? It's control. Yeah. Okay. It's command control F. That should be what it is. There we go. No, that's not what I want. Oh, well, it's because you did it in it. Let me try command shift F. There it is. No, that's not it either. Okay. What I'm trying to do is it should repeat whatever this filter is but allow me into the dialog box oh and why it's not doing that i just don't understand anymore so something has changed with the way this thing has worked it should bring this up yeah what's happening right now it's blurring it kind of Blur. evenly all across the board mm -hmm. i'm going to show you a trick that's worked really well most of my life here Let's okay see it here we go i'm going to blur it unevenly someone said it's just command f but oh I okay. guess not. <laughs> well, that's, it brings up that stupid thing. Okay. I'll have to disable that. Maybe it is just Command F. Okay. Anyways, I'm going to blur it unevenly. So I'm going to step into my quick mask, hit Q, hit G for gradient, all right? And I want to change the opacity to zero or 100%. And I'm going to drag something out. So it looks like that. Okay. Now, the parts that are 100% red will be totally masked. And the parts that are light or white will be selected so this is what we're gonna do so i'm gonna step out of this and this time when i go to blur okay command f mm. filter blur i hate doing it this way gaussian blur and now you see when i blur it i see the parts in the center are not touched and the parts on the outside are blurrier so when you hit q that is like a mask it's like, a quick mask okay Let's use the right word. A quick Q mask. for quick mask. Okay. It's a temporary mask. As soon as it toggles back and forth, once you get rid of it, it's gone forever. Okay. Okay. So that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to hide this so you guys can see the difference. So it's kind of softening out that radius. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to do it again because yeah, you can again. repeat this a million times. Okay. Let's say I'm going from there to there. Now I'm going to blur it again. So it's a command F, option F. Command control F. <laughs> so I blurred it again. Is you that see too that? Much? Who, yeah. who knows? Okay. Who knows? Got it. But I'm just showing you the effect. You see that? Yeah, right no, there? I see it. Thank I got you. a little edge here, which I don't want. So I'm going to go quick. Oh, deselect. Quick mask. I'm going to go like this. I'm going to get it to this area here. Okay? Okay. Now I'm going to go and blur again. Come in. It's supposed to be command option F. I don't know what's going on. Blur, Gaussian blur. So just understand the concept. You see it? So it's mm -hmm. it's not even. So something that's farther away from the light source or that's curved should blur differently than everything else. Mm -hmm. So there you go.
So now I turn this thing back on and I'm gonna move this down a little bit. So it's something like that. I have blurred it too much. It's just too crazy blurred. So I'm gonna do it again. Filter, blur, Gaussian blur, and I'll bring it down. Yeah. Come on, how much? There, something like that. That looks pretty good. Okay. Okay? Yeah. So it's a little uneven. It's a little darker. It's a little lighter in mm -hmm. certain areas. And I'm going to shift it down a little bit because I want the light source to be on top. Right? Yeah. Makes sense. And shooting maybe to the left a little bit. Something like that. So that gives you a little bit something that looks a little bit more dimensional. I'm not done yet. There's a little bit more work to be done here. Okay? Yeah, but it's really cool because you... It looks like the picture's curved. Yes, it know? does. It's an illusion. Yeah. And you can swap out this photo. You can turn this into a smart object and mm -hmm. then swap these photos out and just crank these things out. Yeah. No problem there. Cool. And you can build these things up too. You can make the transparency of this like three or four or five, whatever it is you want just by hitting that key. Mm -hmm. So that's nice. And then you can, you can select this layer again and do a harder shadow if you want. So watch. I'm going to do this again. Fill it with black. And I'm going to move it down. So now you can see that. See that? That's a different layer. Yeah. Right? But you missed the curved effect. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm not Okay. I'm not interested in that just that. Yeah, I'm just trying to show you that then you can blur this again and you can do lots of different things. Uh -huh, and see. you can just layer an effect so that you can get different degrees of opacity. Mm -hmm. Now, the reason why I'm not done yet is because I want to add a light source to this photograph of my mom and dad. Okay? Cool. So what I want to do is I'm going to select these two things and hit Command G. That's going to group them together. And on top of this, I'm going to add a curves or levels or whatever. I'm just, you get more control with curves. Some people say you should only use curves, but for the demo, I'm just going to use levels, right? Mm -hmm. What I want to do is I want to darken some of this image. Okay. So I'm darkening it right now. Okay. Okay. I want to go back into my layers right here. This is affecting the background and everything. So there's no point. What I want to do is hit down option, hover between the two layers and click on that. So it's only going to affect my d that photo okay okay yeah but it darkened the whole thing i don't want that so i'm going to go into the mass part of it i'm going to deselect this part so i'm going to hit g for gradient my circular gradient tool which if you hit left and right bracket it'll toggle through all those different tools so i'm going to go there and i'm going to drag outwards i'm sorry i'm not dragging with the right color i should be dragging out with black so as i open it up you'll see now there's a lighting effect yeah place on the photo and it's happening right here and if you guys can't see that what I'm going to do is I'm going to go bananas Bump on this and really darken it like that. Go back to my layers. So I'm here. And the cool thing about the circular gradient versus the linear gradient is I can just make pools of light. Like, for example, if I want to pull out my mom, I can do that. Very and now cool. you have a thing. Uh, I may want to make this go white. No, that's horrible. And that's, that's kind of what we're working with, guys. Cool. You see that? Yeah, I do. Now we can also... Oh, somehow, let's see here, what, what did I do? Oh yeah, I put that dark edge on that photo, you guys remember, right? Yeah, I did. See, without the shadow, there's still a dark edge there, right? I'm going to add a highlight edge as well, because I can see that I actually leveled this thing out pretty far, so I'm gonna select this, right? Yeah. Hit the marquee tool, I'm gonna offset it down one pixel to the left one pixel, Command Shift I, hide it, Hit Command L, and I'm going to bring the white point up. Do you see the highlight now? No, oh, yeah, I do. There. Cool. There it is. So you got a nice white edge highlight and a darker one on the bottom. I think I went too far on that, you know? Mm -hmm. So I can lessen the contrast of that by just staying in this layer. Hit Command L, bring the black point up, and it should lessen the... Let me mm -hmm. see. Is it? There yeah, it goes. It. You see that? Yeah. So bring it up to that point right there. And that seems more reasonable to me. Yeah, it does. It shouldn't be that far. And that's how you do a photograph with a curved drop shadow. Mm -hmm. Now, we can add more stuff on here, like some stains and all that kind of stuff. Do you want to see that, or are we good? What stains? What do you mean? Like a Now, you see this right here? I'm affecting the whole photograph, and that might be too severe. So maybe I just want to affect the image and not the white border. What do you think? Yeah, I think right, so. Let's do that. So I'm going to just take this color correction and bring it down here. And it messes it up. And then I just link it to that layer. 
So it doesn't affect the background. It just affects the photograph. Is that okay? Cool. Yeah, that looks <clears throat> Is that pretty good. That works. Okay. I'm going to save this. Um, I just want to make sure I don't accidentally save it over my real thing. I'll Should we the ask desktop. the people if they want to see the photo? Well, I want to show them one more thing. Okay. What are they saying? Let me see. Photo. We'll call this uh, photo frame demo PSD. Save as my desktop. What do they want to know? Um, I'm reading. Let me see. There's. That's pretty neat. Thanks, Chris. If You're you welcome. Make, if you make a layer, a smart object, you'll be able to edit the layer. Yes. That's correct. Now, if I were really smart, I would have recorded this as an action and then be able to save this forever. And because I haven't done this, I haven't prepped for the show. If I had worked through these steps ahead of time, I would have created that. I would have given it to you guys as an action so you can turn any photograph into something with a white border and a curved drop shadow. Okay. But I wasn't planning that far ahead. Yeah. I knew. So let, let's say I want to add some scratches and stuff to this photograph. Yeah. I could do that. Okay. So I'm going to go into my texture library. So I'm going to go open. You know, I'm going to take this opportunity actually to go to my desktop and show you what my texture library looks like. So I have this thing called texture library right here. And this is what it looks like. So I have things called action, brushes, graphics. I have a gazillion things, antennae, animals, abstract. <laughs> and I'm looking for something in particular, dust and scratches right here. Okay. So in here, I think I have a dust folder. And I'm going to show you what it looks like by hitting command one. And if I enlarge this, you see I have something with little scratches. And this is one of my favorite ones. This is a piece of acetate. Ooh, I like this one here. Let me open this one up. Okay, you see this right here? This is a piece of acetate that has been left out of the dirt. Somebody stepped on it. It's mm -hmm. got some nice little scratches to it, right? So yeah. now I'm going to select all. I'm going to copy this. And I want to put that on top of this. But I want to use it as a color correction. Possibly. Possibly. This is a trick. Not, not too many people know this. So I'm going to add another color correction layer here. I'm going to hit, uh, let me see, hit levels. Another levels one, right? And it's fine. I'm not going to do anything. So you see there's a layer mask with the levels, mm -hmm. right? I want to make sure it's parented to this thing. It's linked to it. And I'm going to hit option and step into this layer so you can just see white now i can paste this sucker in there apparently this photo is pretty big because this texture map is not big enough all right now if i go into here so i paste it in here you guys know what it's going to do right everything yeah. that's black is going to be deselected and everything that's white is going to be selected right that's how these masks work. Say yes, like you yes, know. Yes, I'm paying Do attention. You know? yeah. No, I mean. <laughs> That's how masks work, right? Okay. Yeah, the white and the black. I, I yeah, the that. white. If it's all black, it doesn't get selected. If it's all white, it gets selected. Yeah. So this is going to be somewhere in between. Okay. So I'm going to adjust the levels here a little bit because I don't want all that junk in the middle. Maybe I want a little bit more. So only these parts are going to affect, is, are going to be transferred throughout, okay? Mm -hmm. So now I double click on this and you'll see if I make it lighter in those areas why isn't it showing anything there it is see the scratches barely okay yeah i, I do i cranked them up i mean it's a <laughs> subtle effect right yeah yeah so here we go I'll, I'll crank it to maximum effect probably more than i would normally do mm -hmm. so you guys can see what's going on i'm gonna zoom in here okay, okay. i see it i see so it. now if i go to layers i'll toggle it on and off and you'll see it yeah oh. yeah that's i'm using color correction but i'm using that texture mask texture layer to mask out what I don't want to keep. Now you see it's only picking up what's white and not what's black, right? Mm -hmm. That's, That's how layer masks work. Now there are very little bits of white in here. That's why you can barely see the effect. So if I want to exaggerate this, I'm going to select that layer mask, hit mm -hmm. command L and really crank that thing up and you'll see it now. Can you oh, see it? Yeah. So it's going bananas now, oh, right? Yeah. <laughs> All right. I'm just showing you the extent, I know. right? Mm -hmm. So, if I really want a lot of texture, I can go there. And that's how you add texture to a photograph. Very cool. Okay. Now, you guys want to see how I organize my library, so I'm going to show you that. Is everybody cool? Everyone on the internet cool? Yeah, they're all cool. They're not too chatty right now. Okay, that's fine. <laughs> yeah. How many of them are there? Four? <laughs> All right. Uh, 289. 289. So maybe people just want to sitting around goofing off. Yeah, there's... Okay. 89 on Facebook. Okay. So I'm going to go to my finder here. I'm going to get this back to a more reasonable size here and hit command three. Okay. So I got so many 
what kind of textures do we want? Maybe we want to see something with wood. People said, "Sorry, I'm taking notes." And don't take notes. Said, Just pay attention, I'm watching. Guys. We're not. There's butt. Why don't I have butt? Okay, never mind. Cabinetry. <laughs> these are my textures, you guys. I don't know where any of these things come from anymore. Some of them are bootleg. Some of them were purchased. Some of them I scanned and took a photograph of. Some of them I hired people to take photographs for me. Others were for jobs I worked on. This is my wood folder. I have waters and water and liquids, utility, typography, train tracks, texture stamps. So dirt brushes, you know. Do you have more images than our friend that came on? What's his name? I don't know. James Levy? James. Uh, I, I think I, I might because I've been working longer than he has. So here's the thing. I don't even know what this is. Background gray. I'll grab this thing. Open it on Photoshop. Maybe I want to just put this underneath my mom and dad. Oh, mom and dad. It's a tiny file. Dang. Yeah, that's there. Because I have Boom, it. Boom, we're done. We're done. <laughs> the end. Right? Yeah. There. It's on concrete. Yeah. What else can we do? What else can what we is, do? What is our, what does everybody else want me to do? Um people, what do you want? Tell us now. Well, I'm gonna do a lighting effect on the background. Chris, too. can you talk about light spills over the edge to match the cutout with the backgrounds? Yes, I can. But we probably should contain this conversation to just cutting things out. Okay. And then I'll do the light and shadow effects. I most definitely can. Did somebody ask that or are you asking no, that? No, someone asked that. Okay, yeah. For sure I can I can do that. Right? Yeah. For sure I can do it. But not now. So before we had layers, we just had to use layer mask. I mean quick mask, and that's all we had to use. That's why some of us old timers, that's what we use. So you see, I'm like kind of, and what I'm doing is here, I'm just adjusting the background. So it looks like there's a sense of a light source up here. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. And then I'm darkening this area because I want a little bit more contrast between those two moments right there between yeah. this edge and that background. And I did it in a destructive way, meaning I didn't use a, uh, an adjustment layer because so I don't want to So you can never undo it. You can undo it. But once you hit save, you're, it's, you know, you're gone. Yeah. I'll just commit to it. Let's say you want an, like a warm light source here. We mm -hmm. can do that. I'll show you how to do that real quick. The way I like to do it is just use a gradient and give it some color temperature. And typically I do it a lot more than you need. Oh, I'm sorry. I had a layer mask on. So it's oh. going to be like that. You know what they want you to do? What's that? Remove the girl on the left. This My mom? No, no. This girl in the background? The, I mean. The sliver of a girl on the very this left girl? edge. Yeah. And not now. I mean, come on, guys. <laughs> I mean, it's Photoshop. You want to do it, Molly? Maybe. No. <laughs> I mean, do you literally, you want to do it? Not does a person want to do it? No. Okay, I mean, so if I want to do a color correction over here, there's a couple things I can do. And, and I just want to explain to you guys the way they, these, I think they're called transfer modes in After Effects. I don't know what they're called in Photoshop. What do they call in Photoshop, these things? What? the? the these things. What, what is this whole palette called? I don't know. Mode? There's thing called Google. Okay. The way this works, you see how these lines, they break apart these things? When it says darken, usually the top one tells you basically this whole group. These are all different ways to darken the image. Darken, multiply, color burn, linear burn, et cetera, et cetera. This is a way to lighten the image. Lighten, screen, color, dodge, et cetera, et cetera. They're blending modes. Blending modes. Thank you. So this blend mode is a mix when it's overlay, soft light, hard light. So if I do soft light... It will add some color in there. You know, it's a blending mode. These are different, so it'll do some crazy. Most of these are pretty unusable to me. Yeah. Okay. And they are usually telltale signs that you're using Photoshop blending modes. Is it color? Color is what I want. I want to change the color of the light source. Now, that's pretty insane. That's super yeah, intense, a right? Lot. Right. That's okay. Maybe the light source is warmer and hotter in the center. So I'm going to hit gradient. I'm going to do this. Yeah, it looks like it's on the ground. Okay. Yeah, it's on the ground. So the way we can control this is we can change the opacity of this. Zero. Oops. Let me hit V. Zero. Deselect. Like one, two, three, four. So we can dial it up and down, you know. That's how we can control it. That's one way we control it. The other way we control it is to hit Command U. 
to change the hue saturation of this thing. So if I go and swing the hue, so I can explore color and color design, you know? Mm -hmm. So if I want to do a warm, cool light, whatever, there's lots of ways to do this. And then I can change the saturation. I can make it less saturated and make it lighter. So mm -hmm. I can dial the exact effect I want. And that's it. That's another way to colorize this thing. Cool. Okay. I'll delete that. What else do we want to do, guys? Let's see. Um, I promised that demo like a year a and year ago three years ago something like that but that's it should we wrap up the the stream if people don't have any other questions i'm, um, I'm good to go yeah. yeah we can wrap it up let's wrap it up sounds let's good yeah. okay i think the crew is tire red and <laughs> okay. we're gonna wrap it up so let's, let's see it. here we're not gonna be back this is the show okay so before we exit this i want to remind you guys you're not defined by your past the future it's what you make it. And I'm going to go out on some dark music. Yeah? Yeah. Let's do it. Keep it dark. Keep it dark. Keep it black. Have a great weekend, you guys. See you on Monday. Molly, Aaron, Erica, thanks for being here. I hope I brought a chill energy, even though my <laughs> energy caffeine level is low. No, you you've great. been great. You were you great, great today. Thanks, guys. We feel great. See you next time. Later. <laughs> <laughs>